Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today we're going to talk about how to introduce uh, and take your kids to an art museum. Because usually when you talk about art museums, everybody, all parents kind of groan because they go there and they're overwhelmed how big it is and the kids are overwhelmed how big it is. and so. When they leave, they're frazzled and they're exhausted and it's a horrible experience. Now, we don't necessarily have that experience when we take our kids to like a curiosity museum or a science museum or where there's dinosaurs or something or fish or something like that. But it seems like when we take them to an art museum, it's just too overwhelming. So let me give you some ideas on some things that you can do because I love art and I think it's wonderful if you expose your children to art at an early age so that they too can enjoy it. Okay, so one thing that we did is we told our kids that we were only going to spend one hour so they could kind of see the beginning from the end. The first thing is that we were going to the museum after seeing a couple of things, and I'll tell you, you know, the plan and the strategy that we had. Then we went to the, the museum gift shop and they each got to pick out one thing because usually they're about 10 times more expensive than any place else. And then we went to lunch. You know, we always had those three things, museum, shop, lunch. So what was the strategy? Well, first of all, before you go to a museum, you want to make certain that you prepare your kids to go to the museum just as you would prepare your kids if you were going to take them to a musical or a play or a ballet or the orchestra. You want to do pretty much the same thing. First of all, look up on the internet, find out as much informa information as you can about the art museum. See if there's a, a, a section just for children and different types of activities and find out what those activities are. Usually, if we took our kids to an art museum and there was a section for children, that's where we went first. We would go to that section, we would spend, you know, maybe 15 minutes. Oftentimes, the problem with them, and I'm sure they've changed them and made them better now, it was just a matter of kids pushing a bunch of buttons. Okay, so you want it a little bit more engaging than that. The next thing that we did is I would go out and I would get different books on artists that they were going to see at the, muse at the museum. Mary Cassatt would be one, and she did a lot of paintings with mother, mothers and children. Another one, of course, is the favorite is Picasso. Picasso, of course, is the father of modern art. And you can explain to your children about cubism, how he took little tiny cubes and he created these pictures, and how he broke all of these faces and people up. He broke up their bodies and he put them back into strange ways. Actually, if you read and study about Picasso, he was, he started out as a representational artist. You know, if, if it was, you're looking for a banana, he drew it exactly like a banana. But he was highly creative and he wanted to take off. He wanted to do something different. So in this, and this is a whole series and you can get all different ones about these books and it will take you in and it will tell you about the different artists and it will show you pictures. Here's another one about Renoir and about his paintings and how he um, painted and, and so forth. This one is looking at children. Now this is an interesting one and this too comes in an entire series. And this particular one helps you to look at these pieces of artwork and, and they have to do all of them with children and they tell something about the artist and something about the painting. Now, we also used, I also used this one when this came out. This is a Dr. Seuss, My Many Color Days, because he would go through colors and the emotions of colors. And so we would talk about that and I'll explain that a little bit more thoroughly when we get to that part. So, what we did is we'd go to the museum and I had a notebook for each child. My husband would take two of the kids and I would take the other two. And here's what the assignment was. They were to go to different sections of the museum. They could go anywhere they wanted. And that what they did is that they went in, as they walked into each section, they were to look at all of the paintings, all the drawings, all the sculptures in the room. Now, they didn't have to sit there and look at intently at anything, but if there was something that caught their eye, they were to go up to it, they were to write down in their notebook um, the name, the title of the, the drawing or the painting or the sculpture, and who the artist was. Then they were supposed to spend about two or three minutes. Now, two or three minutes for a child nowadays is an eternity since they have the attention span of a gnat. But they were to sit there and they were to look at it. What things do they like about it? What kind of feelings do they have? Does it make them happy or sad or joyous? Or are they curious about it? Is there something about the colors that they really like? Is this something how they put it together? Is this a sculpture that's kind of big and overwhelming to them and they've never seen anything like this? They were to write down all of their thoughts, feelings, impressions, everything that they thought about it. Now the assignment was that they were to pick five. 
and it could be again a painting a drawing a sculpture it could be whatever they found but they were also to write down approximately where it was in what section of the museum so if we wanted to go back as a family and look at it we could then we got together and we talked about all of these different things, how everybody felt about their particular five paintings or whatever that they found their artwork. When we went to the art store, I tried to find cards that were similar, at least a one card per child that was their particular favorite painting that they had had so that they could take that back and they could keep it in their room. They could hang it up on their bulletin board and be reminded of what we did. Now another thing that I think is interesting is, and this is kind of another game that you can play, is that you can talk to your children about synesthesia. Okay, that is a big word, synesthesia, and it's actually the crossing over of all of the senses, and there are people who are synesthetics. Meaning, and the best way to illustrate this is, these people, when they look at the alphabet, they see it in color. So when they open a book, instead of seeing black uh, printing on a white page, the, the page is all colorful because all of, the, uh, all of the alphabet in their mind is a certain color. Now, I will tell you, with, if you go from synesthetic to synesthetic, they see the same A in the same color from one to another. I mean, they're just not seeing like a blue A and the other person seeing a red A. So that's one thing. Another thing is when some synesthetics um, they can actually look at a shape and they can taste the shape. There's a book out by Richard Sidewick about the man who tasted shapes and this is all about synesthesia and about people and you know they're they have incredible memories as you can imagine because they're using all five of their senses for everything. Oftentimes some of them actually when they get hurt or something they see colors. I've known two synesthetics. One of them was, um, she's an artist, but when she heard any music, particularly from the music of Bach, she had these incredible mathematical paintings come into her mind and she could actually taste the shapes. So she, um, <clears throat> I arranged for her to come and do a presentation and the orchestra that I started, we played some of the music of Bach uh, and she showed these paintings and she explained about how she came to know and understand that she was a, syn a synesthetic and it actually runs in families. Now, what you can do in terms of making this into a game is you can go to an art museum and say, okay, we're gonna find, these, find each of us these five paintings, drawings, sculpturing, sculptures that we really like. We're gonna write down the title, we're gonna write down the artist, we're gonna write down all the things that we feel about it. But now we're going to get into the shoes and we're going to pretend that we're a synesthetic. We're gonna pretend that we could actually taste some of the shapes of, of what we see in the drawing. If we are able to taste some of these shapes, maybe it's a house, maybe it's a barn, maybe it's a cloud, maybe it's a star, whatever it is, what do those shapes taste like? How can we, if we're actually able to, to see a shape and we're able to touch it and to feel it, what would it feel like? So let your mind really wander and, and embrace that. Another thing is when you go to eat, okay, go and have, maybe order you know some kind of a soup like a minestrone soup or a pasta fajol soup that has a lot of different pastas and vegetables and everything and then talk about it in terms of your experience at the museum there was a cacophony of all different artists there look at the soup that we're eating look at the hamburger or the sandwich or whatever the salad that we're eating here is a whole bunch of different things that go into making that this beautiful presentation of what we're eating just like there was so much work and effort and love that went into creating all of these works of art so anytime that you can cross over the senses anytime that you can relate it to as many things as possible I can absolutely guarantee you that your experience at the art museum will totally and completely change and it will help your child to fall in love with art. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you tomorrow.